Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to focus on one of Hollywood's greatest stars, Clint Eastwood, who has been active for a respectable period of 75 years. In this video, I will try to cover his career as an actor. There were no natural enemies, as long as they were well fed. Yeah, something like that. Well, maybe so, Doc, but there were four rats in there when I changed my lights. Now there's only three. Are you sure you fed them all this morning? Sure, I always feed them. I We start in 1955 with his first uncredited screen appearance, followed by the credited theatrical movie Five miles debut. Miles an hour on land. Yeah, what the well-dressed bosun mate wears when he impersonates an army officer. Yeah. What's the matter? Is he tanked up? He's cold sober and wearing an officer's uniform. An officer's uniform? Army. Army. Oh. Well, don't let it get you down. It's all over now, and you're out of trouble. I have seen you bring down a hawk in flight. The sun was in my eyes. The sun is behind your back. A column of soldiers approaching. All right, Ben. Fire two rockets on this first pass. Here goes. Dropping napalm. Follow an order. What is it, Will? Telephone, Dr. Parker. Just study these when they're dry. Okay. Terry, I'll call you tomorrow from Chicago to see if they answer our question. Good luck with your speech, sir. Oh, thank you, Will. I'll need it. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Tom. Today's the day, isn't it? His first uncredited appearance in Western. Yeah, the day's the day. I was going over to the casino to lay a bet when they open. I hear they're giving five to three. Hall don't hang. Eight to three. How would you bet if you were a betting man? Do you like girls? Yes, ma'am. I do. This is the second credited theatrical movie for Clint and contains what is inevitably one of the oddest, most unexpected romantic pairings in screen history with him and Carol Channing. If you do, you're going to meet up with a pack of trouble. Yeah. You mean before them cows change their mind? No, before Rose decides she wants to sell something else. Come on. Order! Order! Dr. Bell's waiting for him in surgery, sir. Another uncredited appearance where even his voice was dubbed by another actor. You're not carrying the rifle, Mr. Stanfield. Well, I'm a man of principle, sir. That's all right. We promised him his freedom, and he'll kill anyone who gets in his way. Just. You've had your chance. Eastwood reportedly described this movie as probably the lousiest Western ever made according to him, it was made in eight days. And he had such a miserable time making this film and was so disappointed with how badly it turned out, he considered quitting show business. You want to buy some? Is Captain Honoré right around? Hey. No thanks, it might mix the breed. <laughs> Take it easy and nobody will get hurt. Sure, some good healthy exercise, huh? You want to do this? Man? Clint was 28 when the series began. Although his character was supposed to be 19, and he used the same gun and wears the same boots as in his Dollars trilogy, his contract prohibited him from making movies in the United States while on break from the series. However, the contract did allow him to accept movie assignments in Europe. Over the mountain. There's a face my eyes hunger to see. What's wrong with the place? We've had too many killings. Eastwood's first leading role. His asking price to appear in this movie was just $15,000. Director Sergio Leone warmed to him very quickly and joked that he had only two expressions. With hat or without hat, as a non-smoker, he found that the foul taste of the cigars put him in the right surly frame of mind to play the man with no name. You know baby Kavanaugh? Clint was not ready to commit to this movie when he had not even seen a fistful of dollars. Quickly, the filmmakers rushed an Italian language print to him. The star then gathered a group of friends for a debut screening. Everybody enjoyed it just as much as if it had been in English, Eastwood recalled, and agreed to work for that director again. Now we start. I'll kill you! Such 
and gratitude after all the times I've saved your life. Your spurs. In their introductory scenes, where they are identified on screen as the good, the bad, or the ugly, each protagonist shoot three people. Due to the striking height difference between Eastwood and Eli Wallach, over nine inches, it was sometimes difficult to include them in the same frame. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. Clint was given the choice of taking $25,000 in cash or $20,000 and a brand new Ferrari. He chose the money in the Ferrari. Reputedly, the reason he took the Ferrari as part of his payment was that his agent wouldn't be able to get 10% of the car. Ooh. What's your pants on, Chief? What's going on here? You're under arrest. What's the charge? Impersonating an officer. <laughs> When Coogan is searching the New York City nightclub, the large screen plays a scene from Tarantula, a science fiction movie which was Eastwood's second movie. Hang him. Eastwood's first leading role in a Hollywood movie. He was already 38 years old. He wore the same gun belt and holster that he wore in the Dollars trilogy. Inger Stevens had never heard of him before she was cast. Once they met she began to like him very much and they ended up having an affair. It's just my shoelaces. Despite Eastwood's reputation for violence in other movies, his character kills more people in this movie than any other character. He refused to have his hair cut for his role and referred to this movie as where doubles dared. He was paid $800,000 for the role. Her heart was made of holidays. Her smile was made of dawn. Eastwood and Lee Marvin did their own singing. Marvin's recording of the song Wandering Star went to number one on the UK charts, earning him a gold record. There's more than just gold. Gold is enough. That's buried below. Beautiful gold. There's seed in the ground. You wouldn't by any chance know how many soldiers in the garrison, more or less, you know. About 200 and some cannon. Can you shoot? No, I can't shoot, and you made me climb that thing for nothing! I'll well, take it easy, just wait a minute. Shirley MacLaine gets top billing in the credits, both opening and closing. This was the last time Clint received second billing or anything less than first, until A Perfect World. He has on the same gun belt and holster that he wore in the Dollars trilogy. Speak English. Come on. Yeah, yeah. How many bars like this in your trucks? Fourteen. Fourteen what? Thousand. Why don't you quit your bitching and just... Clint signed to do this movie mainly because his friend and favorite director, Don Siegel, was set to direct it. However, Siegel ran into post-production problems and had to withdraw from the project. Eastwood, who had already signed a contract to do this movie, couldn't pull out. Sometimes a man's got to do things he doesn't particularly like. Never thought you'd be afraid to kiss a girl. Clint and Joanne Harris had a love affair that continued well after they made the movie. During the making of this movie, he directed his first movie, a behind-the-scenes look at producer and director Don Siegel at work. Feel him all the way down to my toes. You girls know why Miss Dabney there knocked me down the stairs. That's because I went to Carol's room instead of hers. Start a relationship. Uh... Thinking you're gonna be completely honest, and all of a sudden the whole thing gets out of hand. It's that other bitch, isn't it? What are you talking about? The picture in the silver frame in your dresser? Look, that picture's got nothing to do with you. 
Eastwood had an experience similar to this movie in real life about 21 years earlier, when an ex-girlfriend stalked him and threatened to commit suicide after he broke up with her. Being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. Clint performed all of his own stunts, including the stunt where he jumps onto the roof of the hijacked school bus from a bridge. Such was the success of this movie that Clint Eastwood and Don Siegel found themselves invited to address police gatherings. This is the last time someone else directed him in a western. He appeared in four more westerns, all directed by himself. The scene when he lights a stick of dynamite with his cigar is an homage to his spaghetti westerns from director Sergio Leone, where he lights dynamite and cannons on fire with his cigar. Another homage to his Man with No Name trilogy is when he shoots hats off people's heads. I never had to take my gun out of its holster once. I'm proud of that. Well, you're a good man, Lieutenant. A good man always knows his limitations. <laughs> Sit down! According to screenwriter John Milius, the reason the sex scene with the Asian woman Sonny is in the script is because Clint received many fan letters from Asian women that contained sexual propositions. Eastwood performed all of his own stunts and it's his favorite Dirty Harry movie. According to several sources, Eastwood did this movie because he wanted to make a road movie and perceived himself to be upstaged by Jeff Bridges. When writer and director Michael Cimino was discussing this movie with Jeff Bridges, he told him it was his job to make Clint laugh both on and off camera. And he did. Mind-boggling possibilities. You forgot the 42 cents. I wonder what the tax people would say if I told them. Clint went on a three-day climbing course in Yosemite National Park, then practiced at home for several months. He did all of his own stunts, including the scene where he cuts his safety line over a drop of at least 1,000 feet. On the second day of shooting, one climber was killed by a boulder. Clint had been in the same position just a few minutes earlier. You're very good. I have really enjoyed climbing with you. We'll make it. Oh, it gives. Boy. You get going. You can't get them all, Josie. That's a fact. Well, how come you doing this then? I got nothing better to do. The first of six movies made by real-life couple Clint and Sandra Locke. Josie Wales kills 55 people. This gives him his second highest body count after Where Eagles Dare. Nothing personal. Right. I just don't think you know what we do for a living in homicide. I'll find out. I hope you don't find out the hard way. This guy runs like a rabbit. I'm not about to lie. This is the first movie in which a character played by Eastwood used the F word. And this was intended to be the final movie in the Dirty Harry franchise, but after a string of failures, Clint Eastwood was persuaded to resurrect the character. You mess around and I'll put the cuffs on you. You talk dirty, I gag you. If you run, I'll shoot you. My name is Shock. Despite playing the action hero, Eastwood doesn't kill anyone. More than 8,000 rounds were used for the climactic shootout scene, and the police officers shooting at the bus were actual active and reserve Phoenix police officers. Thank you. I'd really be pleased if I could 
buy you a drink. Eastwood's boxing coach for this movie was Al Silvani. He used to train Jake LaMotta and had recently prepared Sylvester Stallone for Rocky. Adjusted for inflation, this is the biggest hit of his career and first completely pure comedy theatrical movie. This was not the first Eastwood movie to shoot at Alcatraz, as the location had been used for the Enforcer. One of the most popular questions the Alcatraz prison tour guides get since this movie shot there has been which one was Clint Eastwood's cell? Spin the wheel. This movie was shot on a very low budget compared to other Eastwood movies and grossed around five times its budget cost at the box office. Though, Clint Eastwood considered this take insufficient. It is also is one of personal favorites of his own movies. We're hitting the trail. Now. We felt that good because we love each other. The Apaches have a word for it. They do? Yep. Is that win or lose, or? Eastwood took megadoses of vitamins and ate boiled potatoes like popcorn to bulk up for his role as a street boxer. One of Clint Eastwood's most successful movies at the box office. When adjusted for inflation, this movie is ranked in the top 200 grossing movies of all time. Where is it? Russia. The second of two times where Clint plays a pilot. He did before in Tarantula. Before he was cast, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Henry Jerp were all considered for the role. The spy trawler passed right over its head. Yeah, they spotted me. But Buscati Pierre de Sounds so right to me when I sing about you. Will you shut up? I'm the one who's supposed to promote. Clint cast his own son Kyle as wit, due Kyle's interest in making a movie with his legendary father. The script originally called for Wit to get high from smoking marijuana, but Eastwood, who is very anti-drug, refused, even with Kyle using a prop cigarette. We're not just gonna let you walk out. The highest grossing and the only movie directed by Eastwood of the Dirty Harry film franchise. Although Eastwood made the phrase, go ahead, make my days, it was originally used a year earlier by Gary Swanson and Vice Squad. It has been estimated that he earned around $30 million for this movie. Come on. <laughs> make my day. Hey! It's not a bad idea, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you liked it, that you liked her, but she split on you. Reportedly, Eastwood did the majority of the directing after apparently Richard Tuggle was too slow behind the camera. He was concurrently having affairs with several actresses who appeared in this movie, including Jamie Rose. It is also credited theatrical movie debut of his daughter Allison. Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood had been talking about doing a movie together for several years before this movie project finally came to fruition. Eastwood only agreed to do this movie under the agreement that he would be paid more and that his name would appear first in the credits. This is the only time that they starred together in a movie. Uh, you can go up and take out the goon on the roof. Wait a minute, why do I go up on the roof? Because I'm stealthy, that means you've got to be agile, right shorty? During shooting, Clint sustained what he describes as the worst injury he has ever had on set when a horse he was riding fell through thin ice and launched him forward. Clint suffered a dislocated shoulder. In one scene, he pulls his gun with his left hand because of this injury. It means
please be advised that I'm mean, nasty, and tired. I eat Constantino wire and piss napalm. And I... Though he has acted in earlier war movies and directed others later in his career, this is the only war movie where he both acted and directed. His salary for this movie was 10 million, making him the second highest paid actor at the time. Sylvester Stallone was paid 12 million apiece for Cobra. Respect, sir. You're beginning to bore the hell out of me. First of two Eastwood movies, which featured a then unknown Jim Carrey. The second was a cameo in Pink Cadillac. Reportedly, when Jim Carrey came in to audition for this movie, he did not do one of his scenes from this movie, but instead did his Vegas Elvis Presley act, which cracked up Eastwood and his colleagues. This movie was an attempt at returning Clint to the action comedy genre, which had produced box office successes, but it was a critical and commercial failure, and the least successful movie at the box office since The Beguiled. Olson? I know you from... Car wash. I don't care if this picture's shot in black and white or sepia tone, or we have to make the whole damn thing in animation. Pete and I... Eastwood's vocal characterization in this movie is very different from the way audiences usually hear his voice. He speaks in director John Huston's very idiosyncratic manner, which is done by way of drawing out the vowels in words. It's a sin. It's the only sin that you can buy a license and go out and commit. That's why I want to do it before I do anything else in this world. Who's up front in the cab? This movie featured over twice as many stuntmen as it did actors and actresses. It set the world record for the biggest ratio of stuntmen to actors and actresses. Reportedly, over 80 stuntmen worked on it. Eastwood agreed to do this movie in exchange for Warner Brothers, letting him make his personal movie project, White Hunter Black Heart. Well, you're so good at fixing things. Maybe you'll fix me a light. Now they cut up a woman. It took Eastwood several years to actually get around to reading the script, as his script reader had initially told him that it wasn't very good. Gene Hackman read and rejected it, only to be later convinced by Clint to play a role. Only the third Western to win the Best Picture Oscar. I kill you. You're the only friend I got. You're under arrest. John Malkovich improvised the scene where he puts the gun into his mouth. Director Wolfgang Peterson liked it so much, he left it in the movie. Apparently, Eastwood started laughing off camera, that's why you see Malkovich smiling while the gun is in his mouth. Just wanted to see if she had a sense of. Let me tell you something, Sally. This is not a penal escape situation, this happens to be a manhunt. Clint was not originally going to act in the movie. Kevin Costner talked him into it. This is the only movie on which he has collaborated with Costner to date. This was his first movie since Two Mules for Sister Sarah, for which he did not receive top billing. I'm gonna kill you. Your mama. Now we're bridge playing friends. Men still do that, don't they? I'm not out of date, am I? I've been picking flowers for a woman, a sign of appreciation. No, not at all. Except those are poisonous. <laughs> this was the first love story of his acting career. The studio was initially only interested in casting younger actresses in the lead, but were failing to find anyone suitable. The idea to talk to Meryl Streep largely came from his own mother, Ruth Wood. I've never said it before, but this kind of certainty comes but just once in a lifetime. Eastwood and Gene Hackman never meet in the course of this movie, despite being the protagonist and primary antagonist, respectively. In fact, of the four antagonists, only Dennis Haysbert shares a scene with him. You're gonna get a little woozy. 
If I give you the rest of this, it's gonna fry your brain down the size of a peanut. Sack of shit. Come on, what is it? It's uh, Frank Beecham. Daughter Francesca Eastwood, her mother Frances Fisher, her father Clint, and his wife Dina all appeared in this movie. Francesca portrayed the daughter of Clint as in real life. Was there somebody else there? I don't know. I didn't see anything. Give me something, God damn it! Jesus, man, what do you want from me? What do you people want from me? All right, then. Yeah, lost my wife, lost my kid, lost my goddamn job. Is that rough enough for you? Did you lose your automobile, too? Look, if I wasn't 100% sure that my guys could do as well as your young ass. Clint pilots helicopters, but he's never had a desire to go into space. This is the only time he played a formally married man. His characters are usually single and meet their potential love interest, if any, as the story develops. Four years. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to go down and see the police tomorrow and uh, see what's going on. Don't go thanking me and don't get your hopes up. Famous for playing Dirty Harry and sometimes other cops, portraying an FBI profiler in this movie, this is the final law enforcement movie to date where he plays some form of detective. Everything. There, you keep that tight. That'll pinch off the artery and you won't bleed to death. Now, show me. You're gonna find a trainer either in this gym or somewhere else that's gonna wanna train a girl. It's the latest freak show out there. Okay. If I'm gonna take you on... You won't never regret it. Look, just listen to me. If I take you on... I promise I'll work so hard. Prepping and shooting of this movie was so quick that Eastwood basically kept the same crew as he used on Mystic River. One of two boxing movies that won Best Picture. The other is Rocky and one of two Best Director and Best Picture Oscar winners featuring Eastwood as actor, producer, and director, and Freeman co-starring. The first being Unforgiven. By keeping her alive, I'm killing her. How many swamp rats can you get in one room? I blow a hole in your face and then I go in the house and I sleep like a baby. You can count on that. Scott Eastwood appeared in this movie as Trey. His other son, Kyle, provided this movie's music score. Walt's dog, Daisy, is Eastwood's beloved family retriever in real life. Walt fires a weapon only once in this movie, accidentally, and says a total of 53 insults. Okay. Just turn around and go. You've come a long way. I'm proud to say that you're my friend, but you've got your whole life ahead of you. But me, I finish things. That's what I do. And I'm going it alone. <laughs> No. You know, they already think I, I should be playing bingo and drinking little umbrella drinks. They can't fire me. Eastwood originally hinted that Gran Torino would be his final acting role, although he would continue to direct. The filmmakers got him to change his mind and come out of acting retirement to star in this movie. It was his first major acting role in a movie he did not direct for 19 years. It's okay, Dad. No, it's in my blood and it's in your blood, too. I want you to be happy, that's all. Here in the book of Acts, several times, Paul stands in judgment. I just wanted to tell you a little joke, and that's, why did the horticulturist walk across the hotel lobby? Because he wanted to get to the bar, and that's exactly where I'm headed. Thank you. I feel sorry for her husband, but... This film was based on the true story of Leo Tot A. Sharp, a fellow who spent 10 years as a mule for the Sinaloa cartel, the powerful drug trafficking ring on Earth. In recent years, Clint has only rarely been on camera, but Earl convinced him to rethink the experience. It is Eastwood's 47th starring role and 52nd credited role. Like that? Uh -huh. Yes, see me your papers yeah. at the border. Yeah. yeah, I know I was warned. I went AWOL anyway, so. I won't feel no ill will. And that's all my friends. Thank you for watching and go ahead. Make my day.